Hello, welcome to our webinar about bulk solid measurement with radar devices. Today we want to show you the new possibilities, how we can measure very simple with radar devices, very diff different bulk solid applications. And here we have prepared a lot of practical applications. My name is Jürgen and I'm working with Vega since my half life. And of course, we have a lot of experience and this experience I want to share with you. But not only me, also my colleagues who are here. Hi, good mo morning. My name is Vanessa and I'm not the half of my life at Vega, but I learned what simple and universal means. Our new radar sensors can measure practically all bulk solids, um, even light medias like uh, styrofoam. Hello, also from my side, my name is Stefan and I enjoy working at Vega since almost 10 years. Um, new technologies are often somehow magic, so stay curious and tuned for the magic radar instruments we'll show you today. Thank you. So let's have a look what we want to present today to you. Radar is used in a lot of different applications for liquids and for bulk solids. So we use the sensors in chemical industries in metal production, we use it in the paper production, offshore wind parks or offshore oil instrumentation. We have it in, uh, uh, then the energy production, uh, food applications, storage of big uh, tanks where we store oil or other medias. And of course, it's also used in a lot of bike solid applications from building materials to the food industry, but also recycling material there we use radar devices to measure the level in the different silos. So at Vega we have a lot of experience since more than 30 years. So very, very happy, proud, very proud that we sold already 1 million radar devices to a lot of different applications. At last we have solved nearly all applications once. And therefore we needed in the past a lot of different instruments. So it was possible to use all these different instruments to solve all the applications. So when we have a look on these different versions, we have versions like the Vega Pulse 61 for liquid applications, 62 also for liquid applications, also for high pressure, low pressure, high temperature, low temperature. So we have versions for hygienic applications. And a few years ago, we introduced the 80 gigahertz sensor for liquid applications as well as pulse solid applications. So we could use our different sensors for many different applications. This was the reason why we have been so successful in the past. But at last, you should know a little bit about the different sensor that you know how to install it and where to install it. And which sensor is now used for which application? That's exactly the question I also ask myself. It's really not that easy. There are specialists for liquids, for solids, for high temperature, and you really have to know what type of Vega Pulse you need to really choose the right one. That wasn't really easy, Jürgen. Yeah, that's right. And this we considered a few years ago where we started a new development to make it easier for our customer. So which sensor is used in which application was not so simple. Now we have a go had a goal to make it easy for our customers to have a simple choice. And therefore, we made a completely new development where we had the application in the focus. So let's have a, have a look on a short video to show you what we can do. With all the experience that we have, we designed one sensor for all applications. So that's really unique on the market that we can use the same sensor for liquid and for bulk solids. So it's not only uh, not something that we have to decide at the beginning where we use the sensor. It's easy to switch the electronic from liquid to bulk solids. And also it's possible to use one sensor where we have a demand to have different frequencies. For bulk solids, we mainly use just 80 gigahertz. 
maybe some special application we use 26 or 6 gigahertz on liquids in some medias we need a lower frequency but in bulk solids i would say 98 percent of all applications we could solve easily with a very high frequency of 80 gigahertz where we have a big advantage of a good focusing how is this possible how could we make a sensor just one sensor for all applications a few years ago, we started to make a completely new design of our sensor. And that was the goal to find a microwave chip on the market which fits for all our demands. But this was not possible. We need a low power consumption, we need a very high dynamic range to, can, that the sensor can be used on all applications. This was not possible to find. So we made our own microwave chip according to the requirements and the experience that we have. So we designed a new chip with all the experience of one million radar devices and this is specified specially for level applications. It's already the, third, the second generation of our chip which fulfills all the requirements of safety like seal and so on. So let's have a closer look what we can do with this chip. How is the design of the sensor? Of course we can use the sensor in all kinds of liquid applications, water-based products, solvents, oil products, where we have different reflecting conditions. This is relatively easy because we have always a flat surface on liquids. But on bulk solids, we have a higher demand. On bulk solids, we have different medias, different structures, different corn size. So it's more difficult to use a sensor on bulk solid applications in comparison to liquid applications. But we want to make it as easy as possible. So let's have a look what kind of medias we can measure and how the system is working. So we have a live demonstration prepared where we have installed our radar device here on the top. It's a Vega Pulse 6X with a plastic antenna, very simple to mount, very good focusing of four degrees. So first we start with a measurement of liquids. The value and percentage you can see on the signal conditioning instrument on this controller. So the wiring goes to the controller and here we have a clear big display. So we have here different products. We start with liquid applications. So I move the water passing a little bit and I lift it a little bit up that you can see that we have real a live demonstration where we change the level of this liquid. So it's increasing because, because I'm increasing the level here by moving the target. Water, easy of course, because we have a flat surface. surface. What about bulk solids? So we start with coal. This is coal for my next barbecue at home. Made of wood, conductive material, rough surface, but we get enough signal back to the receiver. But it's easier to measure because we have a conductive material. So we also lift the coal a little bit up. Doing the filling, we have increasing level so we reach nearly 70%. By the way, the adjustment is done here 100% and the bottom here is 0%. Coal is easy. So let's have a look on some other materials where we get not such good reflecting conditions. Okay, we have some building materials, stones, dry stones, hard surface, but different granular size, so part of the energy will be reflected on the side. But we get quite good signals back from these stones because the dielectric constant is quite high. So easy to measure. I try to lift this a little bit up. It's more heavy than the coal. But also here we have about nearly 70%. Some fine product like sand. In the past, this was quite difficult to measure because we have a very flat surface and a part of the energy is reflected on the side. But because we're using a higher frequency of 80 gigahertz, we have a shorter wavelength. So these small particles look for the frequency bigger than when you use just 26 gigahertz because the wavelength is shorter. So we get also diffuse reflection. The main energy is coming back to the receiver. A small part is reflected on the side. So even here, 
56%, and this is really heavy, so I will not lift it. So now we come to the food part, from the building materials to the food part. So we have here maize, very dry, and of course also a little bit bigger surface, but also here we get a good reflection because a lot of energy is coming back to the receiver and the reflecting conditions of this material is not too bad, even when it's very dry. I just lift it a little bit up, so we are reached easily 70%. The same results you would have when you have grain, when you have other materials, also flour, gives a very nice uh, reflection. So what about really non-conductive materials, like plastic materials? So here we have a plastic surface, plastic granulate, nice yellow color, of course, like Vega. So we turn it a little around and I measure to the surface of plastic. And even here we have a nice, very good reflection, even when the reflecting conditions of plastic are not very good. So I lift this a little bit up and the values follows the change of the level. So here we have granulate, but it would also work if you have powder or pellets or something like this, or maybe recycling material from PET uh, bottles. This is also possible to measure, even when there is a lot of air content in between. Okay, so let's have a look at a more difficult application. If you have a lot of air inside of the product, then it's getting more difficult. And here we have a product which is really difficult. And most of the sensors on the market are not able to measure this. So this is styrofoam, very light product. This complete container have a weight of maybe two or three kilograms. But here, lower level, because we are below this 50%, we have 35, 32%, depends a little bit, and so I put some of this material inside. So let's have a look how we can change the level. Oops. The level follows the increasing, even when we have a very light material, one cubic meter, maybe just two or three kilogram. So it's hard to find a sensor on the market which can measure really this light product. And there are some other materials which are also very light. So we have good reflecting conditions on the surface when you have a big dynamic range. So this is very important. Dynamic range is the key to measure this very light product. Of course, there are other materials on the market where I have other demands. Imagine if you have flour or coal dust, Sometimes it's difficult when you want to measure these products, you have to take care about the explosion. So we have to find an instrument which can be suitable for this kind of application. What happens when we have a little bit open light and of the dust of these materials? Will Stefan explain in the next presentation? Oh yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you, Jürgen. So let's see the effect of a dust ex explosion. We've prepared here a little live demo. Um, let's imagine this is our factory where we process some solids. And wherever solids are processed, there is some dust. In this case, we have just some flour, just a little bit of flour in this small little cup here. And of course, we have an ignition source that might be uh, an engine or motor which is getting hot uh, or a light bulb or a level sensor which does not have a dust X approval. In this case, we use a simple candle as ignition source. We better close the roof and uh, wear some protection. You never know what happens here. Safety first. And now just imagine somebody is opening a door or a, a roof or anything like that and air comes in and blows up the dust. And let's see then what happens with flour, where you might think that's not really dangerous at all. I step 
a little bit back and let's see what happens. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, here on the table, it is always fun, but of course in reality this is really dangerous and it's, it's also smelling a little bit ugly. Um, so this is really important that you take care to use instruments with DustX approval. They don't have these hot surfaces to ignite the dust and our sensors do have these approvals, of course. Thank you, Stefan. Very interesting. <laughs> and a lot of fun, of course. So when we talk about explosion-proof sensors, we not only talk about DustX approval. Of course, sometimes you have also the combination of GasX and DustX. Imagine you have some plastic powder, plastic granulate, during the production, then also some gas is coming out of these granulates and these plastic materials. So you have the combination dust X and gas X. And of course, our sensors are also certified for both of these X areas. So it's possible to use there. But also other approvals sometimes are necessary. When we talk about seal, for example, safety related applications. Imagine if you have an electrical uh, um, power station, a carbon power station with coal, and the coal bin runs empty, then the fire of the, of the system can go back maybe to the bin and can cause explosion. And this explosion will be much bigger than what we have seen now. So we have to make sure that in this bin we always have a level of coal dust inside and it's not empty or overfill protection according to SEAL. With our new radar chip, we have all requirements according SEAL and the diagnostic functions inside implemented. So it's possible to use the sensor also for SEAL applications. But besides SEAL, cybersecurity gets more important in the last few years because we have a network and the sensors are part of the network. So there is always a kind of a risk via a sensor to attack your network in the company. And the Vega Pulse 6X is the first sensor which is certified also according to the new norms about cybersecurity. At last, it's the safest sensor you can get worldwide, safest radar device, because we have X approvals certified for SEAL and we have a certification about the cybersecurity. So let's summarize a little bit what we have seen. The setup is very simple because we have one sensor for bulk solids and liquids. We use the radar chip in the second generation which allows us to include SEAL with a very interesting specification and cybersecurity of course. The dynamic range is outstanding so we have the possibility to use this sensor in really all applications when we talk about liquids but also when we talk about bulk solids. Coal, and also this very light product where we have nearly no reflection, only a very small signal which is coming back. We have radar versions for high pressure, for vacuum. We have versions for very high temperatures and also very low temperatures, which is getting more important when we talk about liquefied gases. We have solution for hygienic applications, so it's for the food industry. And of course, we have versions which fits exact to your existing application, to your existing flange, how we can um, modify the sensor and the way that it fits to your application, you don't have to change something. So this sensor type, the Vega Pulse 6X, is part of the Pro series at Vega, but of course, sometimes we don't need always high pressure, high temperature. Sometimes it would be easy, it would be interesting to have also radar devices for more simple applications. Vanessa, what can we do here? Thank you, Jürgen. Sorry. <laughs> um, the new technology of our 80 gigahertz radar chip offers us even more possibilities, which of course we want to use. A completely different sensor design makes small and low cost for simple applications possible. So now you can apply the advantages of radar and the 80 gigahertz technology also to simple ap applications. The basic radar devices are available in an all plastic version with a standard screw in thread for mounting and they have measuring ranges exact, exactly adapted to the applications. The basic series is a very good alternative to ultrasonics with significantly better technology and performance. 
the Vega Pulse C series, you can see it on the left side, is a variant with a permanently attached cable, also for dust areas, thanks to complete encapsulation. On the right side, we have our Vega Pulse Compact series. This is a variant with a classic sensor housing, which is, which, which is also available with an integrated display. Compared to our Pro devices, like this, the basic radar sensors are only suitable for medias with the sufficient relative um, properties such as sand, coal, stones in different sizes and grain, which are stored in containers, small bins and small silos. So that I'm just not telling you something about the devices, we want to show you live how the basic devices are work and let's go to a little practice. So here we have a Vega Pulse C21 and now we want to show you how it works. If I put my hand in this position so we have a level of 57 uh, percent and if I put my arm a little bit nearly to the media so we have an increase to 66 percent. Then if I go to the stones it is also works here we have 58 57 percent of level and if I go near to the media now we have 66-67% of level. Here on sand we have a smooth surface but how you can look it is also work in this position and if I go near to the media it is also works. Here we have 61% 60 of the level. So some practical examples. Here in an Opel vessel we have here a container. Here we use the Vega Pulse 11 to measure the level of sorted solids such as uh, waste um, after curves and fine screening. Here we don't have um, extreme dust or high temperature. Another practical example is the level measurement in small silos. Here we have dust, dirt and abrasive media where the Vega Pulse C23 is suitable. Let's summarize the essential features of our basic radar devices. The Vega Pulse C series is a highly resistant housing of PVDF, a compact sensor design and the encapsulated electronics and the cable entry enable a use in X areas. The Vega Pulse Compact series on the other side um, has a housing of PVD and a process fitting of PVDF. Compared to the Vega Pulse C series, there is a cable connection, and the Vega Pulse 31 ha um, offers an integrated display. As you can see, we have a unique product portfolio in this segment and offers the right radar sensor for each uh, simple application. Now we want to look at our pro and basic radar sensors in an exemplary um, application. For this, our colleague Stefan was um, at a company near our headquarters in the Black Forest, the Ul Gravel and Building Materials in Hausach. As the name suggests, the company is specialized in the building materials industry and supplies commercial and private building projects with gravel, concrete, crushed stones and cement. We start in a mixing tower of the concrete production. A storage of different media from sand to gravel which are mixed to concrete on a chop by chop basis. Typical in the industry are slender silos, a profusion of dust and dirt as well as abrasive media and partition walls in the silos. Here we use several Vega Pulse C23 for the level measurement. So, and what we need also to the production of concrete 
it is cement. So let's have a look to the cement silos. Here we have an extreme um, production of dust and poor reflective uh, properties, but we also have for this the perfect solution, the Riga Pulse 6X. This was an example of the building materials industry, but also it is the same in, for example, in the food industry with the um, similar um, properties. So Stefan, what do you have for us? Thank you, Vanessa. Um, yeah, these basic radar sensors are really great. Now we can finally use 80 gigahertz radar instruments also in standard bulk solid applications. Um, but when I see these instruments and their capabilities, it came into my mind, maybe there are also applications where today there is no measurement at all. For example, here in animal feed silos on farms. It would be great to know how much level is inside, but all the wiring and data visualization, a PLC, these are things farmers don't want to take care of. Or salt silos, which you often see besides roads, where the salt is stored to keep ice away from the roads in winter time. It would be great to really know the levels here, but they are very remote and typically there is no power supply nearby. Or on construction sites, you surely have seen these mobile silos like here, they are filled with plaster, for example, and uh, sometimes a lot of plaster is needed, sometimes not, depending on the construction site. It would be great to know the level here, but uh, yeah, these cables, when they are mobile, these silos, that's, that's really difficult. So uh, the question is, how can we modify these sensors to adapt them for these applications where typically no measurement is done at all? But no problem for us. When it comes to radar measurement, we at Vega can do magic. Um, I brought, therefore, our magic box from our development department. And you can see live now how our product development works here in the Black Forest. Um, so first, we start from scratch. There's nothing inside, as you can see. Empty box. And now we fill it with the requirements for our new product. We need an 80 gigahertz radar, but we don't need a cable. So put away the cable and put it into our magic box. Then, of course, we need a power supply. So I put in some high power lithium batteries so that the radar works for, let's say, 10 years. And finally, we need to transmit the measurement data somehow so we need a wireless data transmission. So I will just add my mobile phone. So that's the mixture we need for our new product. And finally, we just need to apply some Vega Black Forest magic. Let's have a try. Abra Cadabra, three times Vega Pulse. And let's see if it worked. Yep, yeah, we are lucky. Our developers have been really fast. And here it is, the Vega Pulse Air 40. This is the first autonomous radar level measuring instrument, which is really specialized on bulk solids. It can also measure liquids for sure, but more challenging is the measurement of bulk solids. It's available with threaded process connection or flange. It has our 80 gigahertz chip, so it has a very high dynamic range and can measure up to 30 meters the level of solids with a beam angle of down to four degrees, so really a really narrow uh, beam angle. It has dust X and uh, gas X approvals for ATEX and IEC um, regions and uh, can be used on almost all um, uh, bulk solids applications. So let's have a look where the data is sent from this sensor. It's measuring 
on uh, mobile silos or remote silos, the level, transmitting the data via LoRa or the mobile networks narrowband IoT or LTEM. The data is end-to-end -end encrypted, so it's really safe. Send it to our Vega cloud and from there on we will provide you an access to our Vega inventory system where you can see the stock levels visualized in a personalized view like you want to have it. Let's see the benefits in the real applications. For the animal feed silos, for example, um, the supplier of the food can do the refilling himself. So he knows the levels of all silos and the farmer doesn't have to take care and the animals don't have to starve. And also for the salt silos, they can be refilled automatically by the sub-supplier, taking care that there is always enough salt in every silo. And even on these construction sites, our sensors are so clever that they even recognize if these silos are uh, in horizontal position when they are transported, then we don't measure, or if they are upside down, then they start to measure and transmit the data. The batteries here inside can be replaced. And uh, for example, when you measure twice a day, they last up to 10 years. So that's a really cool solution for all bulk solids applications. And the data can be used then to optimize the logistics processes and save costs. Here a short summary. The sensor is battery driven, sending the data wirelessly to our Vega inventory management system for visualization and then the data can be used to do automatic refilling of the silos. Let's summarize what we have seen today. We talked about the Vega Pulse 6X, the universal sensor which is tailor-made especially for your application according your requirements. Either the product, liquid or solid, either the flange size, either the temperature range and pressure range. We modify, we make the sensor like you need the sensor on your application. We have an outstanding measuring range of 120 meter and a very big dynamic range which allows us to measure really all kinds of products. Basic means optimal measurement technology made by Vega for standard processes and basic applications. Not available in all versions, but in all important and standard versions. The, every basic line sensor is integrated in all, in all simple applications and integrated easily. Our Air series are sensors which are battery driven without cables. They transmit the data wirelessly to our cloud system where you can get access to them and optimize your logistics processes, save costs, optimize the routes for refilling and save there also carbon dioxide. If you have any further questions, please send it to us and we will answer these questions via email. Thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.